Uh-oh, did that title ruffle some feathers? Let me know in the comments below. I've shot with the Canon R5 almost every single day for four years. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why it's still the best camera in 2024. All right, seriously guys, uh, check out my Canon R5. I've had this thing for about four years now, and this thing has been beat the f off. I've dropped this camera on pavement, on dirt, in the woods, on hiking, I've tripped, fallen off of rocks when I was photographing the Northern Lights, it's fallen off the tripod because it was dark and I was 3 a.m. and I was really tired. Taking some beatings, I have an L bracket on it, but it's my favorite camera still in 2024, and we're gonna learn why and at the end, I'll also share some things I don't like about the camera that Canon seriously needs to fix. I mainly use this Canon R5 for wildlife hints, the little wildlife setup that I got here. But I also shoot the northern lights and landscapes and videos with it as well. Let me start with a couple reminders of the specs of this camera. It did come out in 2020. 45 megapixels, which is pretty good. I like that a lot. It, that's why I use it for my wildlife photography. It's got 4K, 120 FPS. It's got... 8k 30 fps i've used 8k about three times it has reliable animal eye detection i use it every day it works absolutely amazing could it be better sure but it's gotten me so many more photos than a camera like a dslr that doesn't have eye detection in it and it's got a 14 bit 12 fps mechanical shutter speed capable of doing 20 fps photos in silent shutter and i know for a fact today there are better cameras that have better fps capabilities in it but there's some other reasons why this r5 still reigns supreme today and i know what you're thinking chris sony does this or the nikon does this or sniper does that i let's go guys get behind me okay thank you and that's great i'm glad for them i'm glad i'm glad for all the users of those cameras but i've had this camera for four years i use it every single day and there's one feature that i just absolutely love whether i'm doing content creation wildlife or landscape photography and i say photography but i'm really going to dive deeper into the videography capabilities and i've already showed you the specs but what this camera has that i don't know if other cameras have it or not and if they do then maybe this video is going to be useless i also shoot so much video i typically in photo mode so i'm shooting photos 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 if i want to capture 4k 120 fps while I'm shooting a photo, I press the record button. I have my R5 set up so I can press the record button. Boom, I'm getting 4K 120 FPS. Just like that, seamlessly, no menu switching, none of that. It goes right there. And when I stop recording, it goes right back into photo mode. It has saved me so much time being able to do that. I've gotten so many more photos and video opportunities thanks to that feature. Now, if I want to shoot regular 4k or 8k video with some audio so 24 30 or 60 frames per second while i'm in photo mode i just press the manual function button and now it puts me in regular video mode this here i still can shoot manual video and i can change my settings if i need to just like that while i'm shooting photos i can shoot video in slow motion or i can shoot regular video no menu switching and it is just an absolute game changer in wildlife photography. If you wanna learn how to set up your Canon R5 the way I have it, shooting photos, and then press record to shoot slow motion video, 4K, 120 FPS, or just press the manual function button to switch to 8K or 4K of your choice, stick to the end of the video and I'll show you exactly how I set up my R5 to do that. But yeah, that is just the biggest reason why I still love the R5 for a wildlife video. I haven't even thought about getting a new camera lately. That's everything that I need. I don't have any issues with it at all. If there's other cameras that could shoot 4K, 120 FPS while you're in photo mode or switch to video, regular video mode without hitting anything in the menu at all, let me know what those cameras are because I'm curious to know and uh, I can let other photographers around the area know to use those settings too because here in Kodiak, we love our bears and we love our wildlife, obviously. But there's so many other photographers here and I'd love to just share information with them. I need to tell you the two things that I don't like. It's not the perfect camera. There's two major flaws that I just cannot stand. And one is 
what everyone hates is the sensor wobble on the camera when you're vlogging with the R5 or the R6. It just has horrible, horrible in-body image stabilization because there's so much wobble in the background and everything. It's really, really disgusting to look at. Hey, buddy. You can lay down. So lay down. The other thing that I don't like about this camera is the low light video performance. Now, I'm not talking 3200 or 6400, even 12,100, 12,100, 12,000 ISO. I'm talking extreme high ISOs, like 40,000 or 50,000. And you might be thinking, what the heck do you need that for? Well, here in Alaska, I do a lot of Northern Lights photos, and I love to capture Northern Lights video, too. I thought it was normal to have that high ISO until recently I was on a workshop with my friend Sergis, and his Nikon Z6 Mark II, and we both had the 20 millimeter F1.4 on. We both shot at 40,000 ISO, and I look at my footage, and I'm like, okay, it looks normal. And then I bring his on my computer. It is 100 times cleaner. And I'm sure that Canon might think, who the heck is using this? But if other cameras are having cleaner footage, it needs to be improved in a future Canon camera. Sensor wobble and low light video performance needs to be improved. And I'm not even talking about the R5 in general because 45 megapixels, it's going to have higher ISO noise. And that's just how it is. But the Canon R6 is only 20 megapixels, and it looks absolutely disgusting. Not just an R5 problem, it's a Canon problem, and they need to fix it. Because not everybody is a pro. And whether you're a pro or not, not everybody is always going to have access to extreme lighting with the designer studio. I think the Canon is made for pros in terms of, if you don't want sensor wobble, use a gimbal. Well, not all content creators can run around with a gimbal all day. If you need better lighting, well, get some lighting and hire some lighting professionals. Well, not all content creators are going to be able to do that. And Canon might be wanting the pro market and not the content creator market. Maybe Sony's are for content creators. But if they can fix that, it'll drive their sales up. At least for me. I'll buy their camera if it has better low light and better sensor wobble. Because I'll oh, just get rid of the sensor wobble altogether. It is my two least favorite things. And it actually makes me want to get a Sony just for the Northern Lights videos. So, Ken, if you see this, please, for the love of God, fix that. Despite the bad, I do think that this camera is still my best camera in 2024. If you think there's something better, let me know again. But I'm not kidding. This thing has uh, gotten me some amazing footage over the last four years. I'm excited to see if Canon does release the R5 Mark II or the R1. That is going to be in the future. It's not going to be right now. I'm going to show you guys how I set up my camera, so here you go for that. Okay, first go to your customized button settings and copy everything I have here. This is important for switching to video seamlessly. Once you have everything copied in the first setting, we are going to set up the slow motion by just pressing the record button while you are in photo mode. To set this, manually switch over to video and choose custom video mode 3. Once selected, go to your menu and enable high frame rate, 4K 120fps. Set your shutter speed to 1 to 50th for the smoothest footage and go back to the menu. On the fifth page of the yellow tab, click custom shooting mode and make sure auto update settings is enabled. Scroll over to the auto focus menu and make sure animal priority and eye detection is enabled. Now your slow motion is set. Switch back over to the manual video mode and do the same thing and choose your settings you want whether it's 4K, 24, 30, or 60 or even 8K. Once again, make sure your animal eye detection is enabled. And that's it. Like I said, this is an absolute game changer in the wildlife photography community, and I hope it helps you too. I'm curious to know if you're still shooting with the R5. If you are, what are your hopes for the R5 Mark II or the R1? And uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to get to know my work a little better, check out my new feature video right here. This is Kodiak. Consider subscribing to the channel if you like my content. And with that said, the video ends right here. Thank you for watching. Bye.